One of the new features in Craft 3 is the ability to access all of Craft's service APIs right in your templates. So before, we did have some access to some of that data via special template functions that Craft made available. Well, now we can go directly and get everything that we need without relying on those template functions. In fact, most or all of those template functions have been deprecated in Craft 3 and will be removed in Craft 4. So let's take a look at how this will work. So the template functions that we had access to before were mostly just twig variables that expose the data via an existing function. So instead of doing that, we now just get direct access to the function itself. So let's look at a few examples. So I have a dev site here running Craft 3, just a blank template. Now in my code here, this is just an index template, that's the site homepage. Um, let's go ahead and test some of these out. Now in the past, let's say we had uh, a, wanted to get some information about the request, the page request. Like, uh, you know, we might want to do something like craft request dot get last segment, right? So this is a special template variable that craft makes available via craft dot request dot get last segment. When we reload, you can see it's actually blank because we don't have a segment. But if I dump this variable here and reload, you can see it returns null because there aren't any because right now we are just in slash nothing. We're at the root of the site. So in craft three, this craft.request template variable and all of the functions are now deprecated. They still work, but we will get deprecation notices if we use them. So I'm gonna wrap this in dump again so we get some output. So for craft three and beyond, we use craft.app and this is how we then have this access. From here, we can kind of reach in and grab what we need. So in this case, we're gonna go and get request and we're gonna get all of the segments. This is how we access segments now. And then we can filter that through, let's say, last. And the last filter will then get the last segment. So you can see it returns false because there are none. But if I just dump that, just the craft.app.request.segments, you can see it returns an array. It's empty because there's nothing to show because there are no segments. Now, if I go into my templates here and go into news, let me just uh, grab that and into entry and save it there. And I go to craft three.dev news and we go into I'm going into news first news article so you can see I'm just printing out the title here let me remove that so it's a little bit clear there we go reload so now we're dumping that again and you can see it's an array and we have two segments here we have news as the first one and first news article, which is the URL or the slug for the article. So you can see it's working. Now I can actually print those out to the screen outside of the dump. And let me just uh, remove this. Now, since this is an array, I actually have to either iterate over it or use a filter like last to get the last one. Let me just set this to the right theme. There we go. So now, you can see I get my last segment right there. I can do first using the first filter. And there we go. And I can also do length to get the total number of segments like that, which is two. So as you can see, instead of calling like get first segment, get last segment, we're just getting the segments and then filtering based on what we need. We can either get the length, we can get the first or get the last. So this is a much more efficient way of working. That way we're not having to remember all those different functions. We just know, okay, I need to get segments and now I need to look at and you know what exactly I need to get out of craft.app.request.segments. So let's go back to our homepage here. 
And another example is something like, is this a secure connection? Now, in craft2, we would say craft.request is secure, right? Let me go back to the home page. And that's actually, a, it's a Boolean. So I'll dump that to get some output to the template. Reload, and you see it returns false. Now, if I go to my utility section into deprecation errors, you can see I have a whole bunch of deprecation errors here. And one of them is that craft request is secure, has been deprecated, use craft.app.request is secure connection instead. So we can use that as well. Or if I go into my code and I go into vendor, so if I go to craft CMS right here, and I'm going to try to find action. All right, and we can, let's see, we'll find where that is. To find URL helper, it's getting it. Well, we can see where this is, is secure is deprecated here, but I also see that there's something called get is secure connection. Let me go here really quick. So if I do get is secure, and this is using craft app get request get is secure connection. If I look at the definition, you can see that this is in the request class for the Yi framework. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to say, oh, this is called get is secure connection. Well, I wonder if I have access to craft service APIs via this craft.app variable in my template. Will this let me get even further down into Yi? I mean, it should, right? Because Craft is just extending this request class, I'm sure. Let's try it. I'm going to go back here. So instead of using is secure, we'll use get is secure connection. Now I need to add craft.app to that. And then request is the name of the class. And then this is the method or the function. So I reload. And you can see it does work. It still returns false. All right, so now I know that I can actually dig down and get some things that uh, you know, are further down into the Yi framework. Let's look here, what else do we have? Get server name, well, will that work? This is in craft CMS variables. You can see get server name, that's where it's referenced. But here, if I go to the definition, you can see it's here in Yi, get server name. Will that work too? Let's try. All right, get server name. I think we can take out the dump because we're actually going to output a string here, I believe. Let's try that. Does that work? Reload. Ah, it does. Craft3.dev. So it does work. Let's look at some more examples now that we know how this works and what the capabilities are. We could, you know, jump into the code and find what we need. Now, they're also documented in the uh, the working versions of the craft documentation for craft three. But let me give you a couple more examples. So here, let's say we can also do something like craft.app.sites, get site by handle, and then pass in the handle. In this case, I have one for German called DE is the handle. So previously, we would use uh, a different uh, function for that, but now I can just go into craft app dot sites, get site by handle DE, and that will allow me to access that part of the craft code. Now this is craft specific, right? We wouldn't get down into the Yi framework layer for this. If I reload, you can see it returns the name here of the site, which is German. So I'm getting the site name by the handle. That could come in handy. Once if I want to check if this is a multi-site installation of craft, well, doing the same thing, we can do craft.app.isMultiSite. And that returns a one for true because it is a multi-site. Now this replaces the old function we use, which was craft is localized, right? Because now multi-site and localization are the same thing. Um, it's just sort of been 
sort of, sort of expanded into multi-site rather than just localizations or locales. So is localize is what we used to use that should also return true, which it does, except we reload, you can see that we get a deprecation message that craft is localized, has been deprecated, use craft.app is multi-site instead, which is what we used. So there is not yet a full list of functions that are available other than there's a chart in the upgrading craft2 to craft3 documentation page on the GitHub project. Now this is in progress documentation, but it will show you the old versus the new, deprecated versus the new. But you know, we don't really need a list created because we have the code that we can use. We can go see what's in there. And once we get a full documentation of all of the methods that are available in craft, we can just pick and choose and find what we need and just access it via craft.app. And so we don't really need to document those because the code is our documentation in that case. A good place to start to find out either what's been deprecated or if you wanna play with this is to go into the code for craft three and under vendor craft CMS, go down to source and then web and then twig and then variables. And here you'll see some of the things we were just looking at. Let's uh, grab one here called request. This is a get server name. And you can see that here is where they are logging the deprecation notice. And here is actually where it's re still returning the data you're requesting, even though it's deprecated, but it's using craft app get request get server name, which if we define here, it's defined here on this line, right? This is what we're looking at right now, but it's actually getting defined here in ye. So if you go through these, you can see what the old ones were, get server name, get URL format, and you can see actually what the new ones are going to be. So this variables directory in craft CMS slash uh, CMS source web twig and then variables, this will be a nice guide to seeing what's been deprecated and what the new stuff is. Might be a great way to start working with craft.app in your templates so you can see the old and then the new. Now all of the deprecated template functions will work in craft three, but of course they're going to be removed completely in craft four. And that means you should get in the habit now of updating your old templates if you plan to upgrade the sites and only using the new template functions via craft.app in your craft three sites. Okay, I hope that helps shed some light on what's new with craft.app in craft three and how you can use it in your templates. There's a lot of exploring that you can do there and I encourage you to do that. I'll have some more content on that in the coming weeks and months as craft three reaches its final release. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryan Ireland and I'll see you on the next video.